Now, the Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng, will uh, preside over the swearing-in of President Jacob Zuma at the Union Buildings later this morning. In a very short while, right around 11 this morning, the President will take his oath of office in front of a large crowd of spectators. While most South Africans will witness the event on live television, we are asking the question, what is the significance? And with us in studio is, of course, the Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng. Sir, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning to you and to your viewers. Everybody is talking about inauguration. Where does this concept come from? I really don't know where it comes from, uh, but I seem to recall, since the president will be taking out an oath, I'm, I'm sure I'm entitled to make some reference to the Bible, mm -hmm. which is where the oath really comes from. In the years gone by, you would have a king anointed, and that would signify the assumption of the high responsibility of king people would be in attendance and there are promises that a king dare not break that he would have to make to the nation in relation to the way he or she was going to govern them so that's that's where it all came from so president jacob zuma is going to take oath uh, wh what does this actually mean well very much in the name in the nature of the oath as in the constitution He's going to be making a promise to the nation. He recognizes in terms of that oath as it is structured that there are many people present. So he says, in the presence of people present here, yeah. and in full appreciation of the high office that I assume as president of the republic, I make a solemn and sincere promise. Those are the words in, in, the, in his oath of office because it's different from the oath of office of all others. Mm. What it signifies is this, that you don't ascend to a position just to enjoy the position. It comes with serious challenges, it comes with serious responsibilities, and those on whose behalf you're going to be running the country need to know what is it that you are promising them. And it's different from an ordinary campaign I, I say ordinary because, you know, you, there is room to say I was quoted out of context there, etc., etc. It's very serious because not only do you do it in the presence of multitudes, including foreign uh, heads of states, you're doing it placing your hand in the Holy Bible and in the presence of the Chief Justice, who, as you know, is the head of the judiciary. What that means to the nation is... If he's going to say this in the presence of the multitudes to our hearing and in the presence of the Chief Justice, to whom our complaints would have to go in the form of court cases in, in, in the event of the president failing to carry out what he has undertaken to do, then this must be serious. So it's a very serious vow that anybody would dare make in the presence of, of people. You know, the, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, the Constitution states that the president-elect uh, will be sworn in within five days, you know, of uh, being elected by the National Assembly. Is this hard and fast rule or are the exceptions taken? Well, um, it's, it's very strict, mm -hmm. um, but there are always exceptions. Say he falls sick um, on, the day, on, on the day of the inauguration or some days before, with the result that it is really impracticable for him to be sworn into office, then uh, an exception would have to be made. There. How do we hold the, the president accountable for what he takes oath for on the day? I think the public needs to be made more aware of their, of their constitutional rights and know that as he swears allegiance to the constitution and the laws of the country, as he promises because his oath says he will do this um, according to the dictates of his conscience, as he promises to be guided by his conscience in serving the people of this country, whenever members of the public have reason to believe that he has failed to do so, it behooves them to approach all available structures, including the courts of laws, to say, but this person has failed the nation. We require of you to make this or the other order so that, um, so that nobody takes an oath, the oath of office and think that he can get away with it. What time is the swearing in, sir? 
11, 16. All right. Uh, on a lighter note, though, how does Justice uh, Chief Mokhoeng uh, prepare for something, a, a day like this? On a, on a serious note, I pray about mm -hmm. it because as a person who had to take an oath myself mm -hmm. before I assumed the responsibility of judge and chief justice, I know what a serious covenant it is I make with a nation. It's not something that uh, you, you make lightly. Mm -hmm. It is not something for the cameras. It's a very, very serious responsibility. So I pray about it mm -hmm. and say, Lord, as the president is going to be taking an oath to serve the nation in line with their constitutional aspirations, help him to be true to his undertaking. As he raises his right hand and say, so help, him, help me God, help him to do what he has promised to do so that South Africa can be a peaceful and prosperous nation. What has been the best part of being part of this process for you personally? Today, mm -hmm. I think the, the oath taking, mm -hmm. the oath taking is the, is the, is the best part. Um, uh, just to have the, the opportunity to remind the number one citizen of this country of his responsibility and their enormity and have to have him commit to do what this nation needs most. Service, good service delivery. Mm -hmm and giving practical expression to their constitutional rights, I think it is the best part. All right. Chief Justice, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, Chief Justice of the Republic of uh, South Africa, Mokweng Mokweng, chatting to us about what is going to happen uh, today.